everybody, I'm Tom Bassel, and welcome to the Dice Tower. Today I'm going to talk about the top 10 games you haven't played. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, top 10 games, you know, that people's, there's always games you say, I should have played, but I haven't got around to it for whatever reason. I don't necessarily know what games you haven't played, so I put a poll on our Facebook group at the Dice Tower and asked people, this very question. So these are the top 10 answers to that question, with several of these getting over 100 votes of various people. And I thought I would just talk about these and give my guessing as to why they haven't played these games yet and why they're high that people want to play them. Number 10 is Terraforming Mars. Uh, Terraforming Mars, I believe, is on the list simply just because it's a very popular game, but it takes a bit to get into. There's a lot going on in this game, and this is going to be kind of a feature on this list. Terraforming Mars has been out for several years now, and everyone says it's great. So it's one of those games that if you're in the hobby, you hear, Terraforming Mars is great, Terraforming Mars is great, and you'll hear that as years go by. So I assume that's why this would be number 10, Terraforming Mars. Number 9 is The Crew. Now, The Crew, that there's a new one that just came out, but I think this counts for either one. The answer was just The Crew. Um, the Crew is a trick-taking cooperative game. For a lot of people, I imagine this game isn't going to work in their houses. A lot of people are playing games at home right now if the folks at your home don't know trick-taking games. So mixing this trick-taking cooperative game together, again, this one has gotten super buzz. It won many uh, awards of the year. So I imagine that's why this one would be high on people's list. Number eight, Dune Imperium. Of all the games on the list, this is the newest one. It just came out last year, and I think this one, combined with how popular it is, as of this moment, I believe it's number 28 ranked on BoardGameGeek.com, a database which has all the games that people rank them. It's really high there, and it's fairly new, so not everyone has been able to get a hold of it. I think for a while it was hard to find, and therefore I can see this one just hitting that buzz. Most of these games, like I said, are lower, you know, are older games, but this is the newest one. Number seven is Brass Birmingham. Brass Birmingham, which was the reprint of Brass, or one of two reprints, There's the other Brass isn't talked about. Brass Birmingham, a uh, very popular game. The people who have it love it. And I think, again, it's on a lot of people's list because while this game is good, it was not an inexpensive game. It's a little expensive, and you have to find a group to play it with. You know, you're not going to be able to like, hey, family, let's play Brass Birmingham. Maybe in your family, but maybe in most families it isn't, which is why I suspect Brass Birmingham is on people's lists. Number six is Agricola. Now, Agricola has been around for, it's, it's one of the oldest games on this list, and I think there's just something about the games from Uwe Rosenberg, the designer of this game, that is out there. There's lots of pieces, it's big, it's grandiose, it's going to take a couple hours or more, you know, learning to teach it and play it. So many things going on, so Agricola. Number five is Everdell. Now, Everdell is one of the simplest games on this list, if not the simplest game, maybe the crew. Everdell, though, consistently seems to be in and out of print. It's harder to find. Now, I know they keep reprinting it. I don't know how many copies of it have been sold. I know there's quite a few. And every time someone plays it, they're like, they tell everyone, this is a great game. And you hear about it, it's great. This is one that was on my list until not that long ago. It wasn't until 2020 that I finally played the game. But it's very fun. So, Everdell, number five. Number four, let's go back to Uwe Rosenberg. We mentioned Agricola. This number four is the follow-up to Agricola, which is Caverna. Caverna is very similar to Agricola. They're very similar. I don't think you need to own both. It's a little bit more forgiving. It's also, I believe at this point in time, it's harder to find than Agricola. Agricola is already on its second edition. Caverna, I'm not so sure on. But either way, they're both big, giant games from Uwe Rosenberg. But neither one is as big as our number three game, which is The Feast for Odin. Uwe Rosenberg has three games on this list. That's the last one from him, of which people want to play his games. These big, sweeping Euro games, worker placement games. Feast for Odin has a mix of polyominoes where you place Tetris tiles, but it's also worker placement. It's the most complex game of all of them for sure. And so I suspect a lot of people haven't played it because of that complexity. Because of that, whoom, do you want to play this? Number two is the only one of its type, and I was surprised. I thought more of this type would make the top ten. That's Pandemic Legacy Season 1. I know why people want to play it. It's one of the most highly ranked games in the world. 
but it's also a legacy game. There's probably 15, 16 times you play this in a row. You play through it. Uh, things in this game will change. You have to find a group who's willing to play through all these games with you. A lot of people, I bet, who put down Pandemic Legacy for games they should have played but haven't probably own it and just haven't been able to get it to the table yet. But it's very popular, and everyone tells you how great it is, and you're like, I know. I just got to find some people to play through it with me. And the number one game, I thought Pandemic Legacy would hit number one, but number one, the biggest and most complex game of all of these on here, which works great with huge amounts of players and takes eight hours, Twilight Imperium. Or it doesn't matter what edition, Twilight Imperium, fourth edition or third edition, both of those are widely available, but they're, they're very similar to each other. There's a big space epic game. If you never heard of this, it's similar to Axis and Allies, but in space with technology and much, much more. There's probably people out there who are fans of it who said he compared it to Axis and Allies, but it is. You have these spaceships, different space races. You're moving around, fighting each other, doing diplomacy, uh, uh, all kinds of things going on. It's a mix of Euro games and Ameritrash goodness, but it's long. And a few players, you can't play this two-player, and it's not really good with three. It's okay. Four is fine, but five and six is what people usually want to play at, these bigger player counts, but it's hard to find that group. You know, Pandemic Legacy, I said it was like 15 games, but I could play six of those games while you play one game of Twilight Imperium. So this one wasn't necessarily a surprise. I know a lot of people say, one of these days I'll play Twilight Imperium. So there you go. The top ten games that you should play but haven't yet. I agree. If you get a chance to play these games, they're all worth giving a world to at least once to see what they're like. I might say if you play Cavern and hate it, Agricola will probably not change your mind. But I like all these games, except for, well, I don't like Brass Birmingham, but I know a lot of people do. Anyhow, in the comments, is there a fantastic game that you've heard of and you're like, I know I should play this, but haven't yet? Let us know. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.